Rasmussen syndrome is um, a very severe form of epilepsy that affects half the brain. The estimate is that there are probably somewhere between 20 and 30 cases per year in the United States. It primarily affects um, younger school-age children, but there have been reports of uh, younger children as well as adults having the disease. The way it initially manifests typically is seizures affecting one side of the body and uh, the diagnostic criteria include seizures that predominantly affect one side of the body as well as MRI uh, imaging that uh, shows progressive atrophy over time of one of the uh, cerebral hemispheres and there are also other diagnostic criteria that include pathological findings if indeed there's uh, tissue to examine. The main challenge in making the diagnosis is excluding other conditions uh, that may uh, mimic Rasmussen encephalitis. And so there are other autoimmune disorders as well as some other structural disorders that uh, can look similar initially. Typically over time, uh, the diagnosis is fairly straightforward, but it does require some uh, thought in terms of making the diagnosis and then deciding which type of treatment to use. So we have a few studies um, going on at Johns Hopkins. Um, the first is a, um, outcomes and quality of life study that we're doing in conjunction with our colleagues at the Kennedy Krieger Institute looking at long-term predictors of quality of life. We also have studies going on trying to unravel some of the immunopathogenesis of the study with Dr. Carlos Pardo, who's one of our neuropathologists. We're also a part of a multi-center consortium that's currently housed at uh, UCLA that's sponsored by the uh, Rasmussen Encephalitis Project.